In my office, we end up talking about detox at least once or twice a month. So when I ask what kind of detox they're doing, most people talk about flushing their bodies. I think it's because they feel the need to remove something from their bodies. So today, I'm going to help you redefine what detox really means. This way, you will understand what kind of detox suits your body and when to do it and how to do it. So, since there are so many types of detox, explaining each one would make this video too long. So, I will give you the big picture instead. Let's get started. Detox is all about the toxins, right? So, we refer the process of removing the toxins from the body as detox. Now, I want you to think about how these toxins get into our bodies in the first place. Toxins can enter through our skin, through breathing, or through the food we eat. So, when toxins enter the body through these three routes, we all understand that the body needs to detoxify them, right? But when we think about the detox, we often don't consider where the toxins are actually coming from. No matter how well you detox, if the toxins keep coming in, it's pointless, right? So, while detox is important, what's even more crucial is to figure out where these toxins are coming from. This seems obvious, but many people miss this point, so I wanted to emphasize it. Now, let's assume that some toxins have already entered your body. Then your body will need to detoxify these toxins, right? So, when you think about detox, what's the first organ that comes to mind? That's right, it's the liver. The liver is the primary organ responsible for detoxifying the toxin that enters our body. So, let's take a look at how the body detoxifies. Toxins don't just disappear magically once they're in the body, right? The first step is to remove and carry out these toxins from the body. If the body cannot remove and carry out all the toxins, it will store them for the time being. But when storing them, you wouldn't want them to store in the vital organs, right? Because they are toxins. So, the body stores them in the least harmful organ. Where do you think that is? It's the fat. Is fat considered an organ? Yes, fat is considered an organ, not just passive tissue. Have you ever heard that you should do a detox when you're trying to lose weight? This is exactly why. When toxins are stored in fat and you start losing weight, the fat breaks down and releases those toxins. This increases the amount of toxins in your body. That's why it's recommended to detox while losing weight. So to summarize, fat plays a role in storing toxins. Why? Because most toxins are fat soluble. Keep that in mind and let's move on to the elimination of toxins. The liver detox process happens in two phases phase 1 and phase 2. But let me explain this in the simplest way possible. There are three ways our body can eliminate and carry out toxins. Can you guess what they are? The first is a sweat. Some toxins are easily expelled through sweat. For example, cadmium is effectively eliminated through sweat. This is one of the reasons why exercise is recommended for detox. So sweating through exercise can help expel these toxins. The second way is through urine. This one is simple and obvious. Just drinking water helps produce urine. The liver converts toxin into water-soluble form, making it easier to eliminate them through urine. Another role of the liver is to help toxin exit the body through bile into the stool. So ultimately, the third way to eliminate toxin is through the colon, you know, like a number two. Let me simplify this even further. Imagine you have a food waste at home. You pour the liquid down to the drain and then put the remaining waste in the trash bag. The liver's job is to make a sturdy trash bag and carry out to the outside. But what if the trash bag is weak and tears open? It would spill all over the house, right? That's what happens when toxins are not fully eliminated from the body. And the second issue is, what if the garbage truck comes on Thursday and you thought today was Wednesday, so the trash doesn't get picked up, and it will be left like that for another day? There is something called the gut-liver circulation. When toxins are on their way out, they can be reabsorbed in the gut, especially with biles. 80 to 90% of it gets reabsorbed in the gut, and toxins can reabsorb along with it. 
That's why gut health is so important when it comes to the detox. It ensures that toxins are eliminated and carried out instead of being reabsorbed. So what are we often told to eat more of? Fiber, right? Fiber, lignin, phytates found in whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, and vegetables help absorb and eliminate various pollutants and toxins from our body. So it's important to include them in your diet. And if your stool quality is poor or you suffer from constipation, the longer the stool stays in the gut, the more toxins can be reabsorbed, which isn't good. Oh, another thing I wanted to let you know is that uh, oftentimes when people have a diarrhea, they think the large intestine is empty, but that's not true. As you can see in the picture, around those angle or between the fold of the colon, stool can get trapped even if you have a diarrhea. So the diarrhea equals to empty colon? Not true. That's why detoxification might not be the happening effectively. So for those who have a trouble going to the bathroom, the proper detox method is to create body that can go to the bathroom regularly. And for those whose liver cannot create sturdy trash bag or efficiently transport them, the right detox method is to improve this process. And finally, even if those two things are working well, if you keep introducing toxins into your system, stopping that is a crucial part of the detox. So I want to emphasize that taking detox supplements or products is just a small part of overall detox process. Take a step back and think carefully about what might be going wrong in your body and which parts are not functioning properly. When you go for your next checkup, don't just say, I'm fine if you have no symptom. I want you to think carefully um, about any changes in your body. Discuss them with your doctor. It's a good opportunity to speak about your general health. And following your doctor's advice and making lifestyle changes is the key to addressing your health fundamentally. I hope this video was helpful and remember, health is well, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean, making health easy for you. See you next time.